is Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet on my TV Charleston. Week number five of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet on my TV Charleston, takes us north of the Wando River. An interleague showdown as visiting Porter Gow looks to hand unbeaten Hanahan their first loss of the season. Hello, everybody, alongside Sean Mahoney and Trooper Bob patrolling the sidelines. I'm Zeke Beam. Welcome into week number five of Friday Night Rivals. Hanahan hosting, visiting Porter Gowd. Hanahan unbeaten on the season at 3-0. Porter Gowd has won three of their last four. Sean, another good one on Friday Night Rivals. Yeah, I mean, it seems like these weeks only keep getting better and better. And Hanahan talking with coach, head coach John Blanchard. He said they need to play a perfect game. They've had a lot of one-possession games this year where they've gotten out early and kind of fell asleep in the third or fourth quarter, almost got caught. And against this Cyclone team, you can't do that. They've only gotten hotter and hotter each week. And they're going to be a tough test for this Hanahan team. Isn't this what Friday Night Rivals is all about? We're standing in the stands <laughs> We're doing in the our trenches. opening stand-up. This is fantastic. <laughs> Fans all around right in front of us. Fantastic. <laughs> When we take a look at our players to watch tonight, it starts for Porter Gowd and defensive end. Zaire Jackson He's a do-it-all defensive end. He's an offensive wrecker, comes hard off the edge, and last week he added another rec- uh, weapon to his arsenal. Yeah, you think of him as the big body on the defensive line where they're – He's going through the middle of the of the offensive line, but now he's going over the top of the defensive line. 70-yard touchdown pass. You don't hear that from a lot of defensive ends, and, you know, that just makes it even more scary. It shows how skilled of a player he is, and he's really a big part of this Porter Gown team. Hopefully we get to see him throw it a little tonight. <laughs> For Hanahan, the player to watch, the safety, senior Malik Gorey. DB wide receiver, plays on both sides of the ball, but really starting to step up in the back of that hall. He's going to be a guy we're going to see play on Saturdays sometime soon, but he can make an impact on offense. They line him up at wide receiver occasionally, but really where he makes his e- impact is the defense. He's the leader. He's the sort of Ed Reed safety, the Troy Palma, the one who can, uh, anchors that defense, and Hanahan's going to need it after the por- uh, because of this Porter guy offense it is a picture perfect night for football here at hanahan high school not a cloud in the sky fall is finally here the sweating over for at least a couple of months much cooler than it was a week ago game number five of friday night rivals the kickoff of hanahan and porter gowd is next
A perfect night for football here in Hanahan. Unbeaten Hanahan trying to stay that way as visiting Porter Gown comes to town with a 3-2 and two record on the season. Coin toss underway down on the field. Looks like Hanahan won the toss, and they will take the football to start this one. Holy City heating and air time attempt to start the football game. 73 degrees. We welcome that. 7.35 p.m. is our time. Holy City heating and air. We provide solutions for every season. How could you ask for a better night of football? <laughs> it, for seems, football? it seems like ever, ever since we had that one one game at Phillips Simmons where it was pouring down rain, most disgusting night, every week has gotten better. And, you know, I welcome 73 and cool this week. And I'm sure the players like it too. Let's go ahead and welcome in the third member of our team down on the sidelines. He's the happiest man to have this weather. Trooper Bob, how are we doing down there? Hey, yeah, we're doing great. You know, every game, this is like my fourth game, so every game I, I say, you know what, this is football weather. This, But this is truly football weather right here. Oh, yeah. Ben did a great job for the national anthem. Now the team's getting ready to come out. The crowd, you can hear it right now. The stands are full of people. Student section is full. This is Friday night football. We got fireworks. We got the Hanahan Hawks. We got the Porter Gallup Cyclones. It's going to be a fun win here tonight. Thanks for joining us. You don't see high, you don't see the fireworks in high school games oh. a lot, but Hanahan's showing off a little tonight for Friday Night Rivals. That's going to make you feel pretty cool, running out with the fireworks through the helmet. I mean, it's one way to get pumped up. <laughs> I wish my high school had fireworks when we were running out. Both these teams still trying to write the story for their season. Porter Gow, 3-2 and two on the season, coached by Brad Bowles. Uh, this is a team that uh, lost early in the year. They lost their opener to Bishop England. They're shut out, and they've bounced back to win three of their last four and really looking to make some noise in skis there. While Hanahan, they've only played three games in the first five weeks, rained out in week zero, and uh, not able to make that game up. They also had a bye week in there, so they're only going to get to play nine season regular season games this year, but they're getting geared up for what they expect to be a very successful season in region uh, in uh, 3A. Starting lineups tonight. Here's a look at Hanahan's offense to start. Starting lineups brought to you by TEC Rentals. Key players to watch there, the running back, Kayvon Rivera, Jaden Cummings, the quarterback. Those two are kind of the A and the B in this Hawk offense. It's a Hanahan team. They've 3-0, three one-score wins. I mean, it definitely gives a nice game for the fans and nice game for us here in the booth. But uh, uh, Coach Blanchard told us that, hey, the Hanahan team, we want to play a perfect game tonight. We want to make our presence felt from the beginning, and they don't want to have those uh, those tight games that they've been having uh, late in the season. Here's a look at the Hanahan defense. Kwame Parker, the defensive end, one to watch. John Blanchard, the head coach for Hanahan. A local product football-wise, he said Caden Gaddis is one of his favorite players in the middle of that defense, another big-time linebacker. Malik Ori is the anchor on the back end. He's starting to get a lot of high FCS, middle, maybe even some upper FBS attention next year after playing basketball for basically his whole life, a couple of years of football, and next thing you know, might be an FBS football player. Palmetto Pride kickoff set for a Porter Gout will kick off. Hanahan will receive. Palmetto Pride litter trashes everyone. Don't do it. A lot of two sports athletes recently that we've been having, but this sure to be a good one. A lot of good athletes on the field, two good teams, and don't sleep on either of them. They're going to come out swinging it in. Like Trooper Bob said, great night for some football. Malik Ori waits deep. We are set for kickoff here. At Wiley Knight Stadium, home of the Hanahan Hawks. Week number five of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, underway. Near side, slipping down after taking the kick right at the 24-yard line was Braden Joseph, and Hanahan will go on offense there. Jaden Cummings, the quarterback, will come out. John Blanchard, his head coach, saying sophomore, played a bunch as a freshman, all of last season, made a lot of progress his first two years at Hanahan, but still his best football still ahead of him, getting better each week, though. It's actually Prince Shepard on the return. You see what Hanahan wants to do. They play that little pistol, short shotgun here to start. Back behind him, three receivers left. Little give and running room over the right side for Rivera, and he has our first first down of the night. 
First quarter first downs brought to you by Mr. Sparky. Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. Little running room there to start for Rivera over the right side. The shotgun set is really hard as a defense to try and cover, and it, you really see the downhill speed of Rivera there, and he's going to be one to watch. It keeps the, the defense on the toes, especially in the shotgun formation. Second down, and Rivera ahead, plowing for a couple of yards. Bring up second down and five. Hanahan won a wild one last week at Timberland, 30 to 24, led 24 to nothing, or led 22 to nothing, I should say, let it all slip away, and then rallied late to score. Yeah, Hanahan likes to come out early, but the key is, can they keep it up late? They're doing really good on this drive so far. Let's see if it keeps up. Coming, snap, little pressure coming, trying to escape Jackson. Gets away from Axon. Will take off. Has the first down and knocked out of bounds near midfield. That was all Jaden Cummings. Just simply improv, and he turns nothing into something and picks up a Mr. Sparky first down. I mean, he feels the pressure collapsing in the pocket. And instead of trying to force a throw or try and uh, get it downfield, he says, hey, I got two feet. I can roll to the outside, run down, squeeze in for the first down, and it was a great play by Cummings. Opening drive of the football game, one minute played so far. Clock stopped, I guess, for the runner to go out of bounds. And a little handoff goes to Ashton Drayton, and he'll pick up a yard and move the ball to midfield. Nice job by Porter Gow pursuing along that 50-yard line, right, around, right along midfield. I always bounce back and forth in my head between the college rules, the NFL <laughs> rules. So I'm like, the clock stopped, but he really, it's, you it's, have to stop and remember it's a high, you know. It's a high school game, yeah. It's beauty of a... Uh... We do a football season, and uh, for me and Zeke, watching football three days every week, it's, all day. It's, it's like a football <laughs> pinball machine in between my ears from Thursday until sometime Monday night. Just wait until Maction starts in Thanksgiving. There you go. Or November, I should say. <laughs> Wednesday games. Hanahan Cummings, little play action. Jackson bearing down on the backside. Jump ball caught. Drayton with it and dragged down at the 10-yard line. Gave his big receiver a chance, and he went up and grabbed it. Hanahan knocking on the door. I'm going to let you do that. And with the beautiful getting it down to the red zone. First off, great catch out there by Ashton Drayton going up. And as, as we like to say, the kids like to say, he's getting mossed the quarterback. Make sure he got up, got some hops. And now they're in the red zone. Boone Hall, Fright Nights red zone. Make sure your screams come true. Oh, it's getting close to Halloween. Knocking on the door, plowing straight ahead, running room. Cooper Smith down inside the five. That big hand-to-hand -hand offensive line, let's give them credit early. Jonathan Tumbry, he's the anchor at left tackle. Solomon Towns, Rhett Bagwell, he's the heart in the middle, the center. Antoine Mitchell and Ian Ordonez, the big group up front. And I do mean big. They're a good-looking group. Oh, yeah. Inside give, plowing straight ahead, Cooper Smith, plenty of running room, and he has the Hawk touchdown. Textbook opening drive from Hanahan. Yeah, textbook opening drive for the first Trident Technical College touchdown of the game. Your future, your college, and Thunder and Lightning, you got Rivera, who's able to, whoever's able to pressure the defense early, and Cooper Smith is that big body back who, like you said, behind that offensive line, just finds the hole in B-gap, and you can run a freight train through that hole on the left side. Beautiful play by the Hawks there, and I talked with uh, the center's dad, Red Bragwell's dad, and he, he said he's been working hard. It's been a good showing here for the offensive line. Eric Johnson on and bangs through the PAT, and just like that, Hanahan off and running. Just a good look at the fan cam sponsored by the Fan Zone. Get it in. Yeah, having a good time on Friday night. <laughs> fan Cam, sponsored by Fan Zone. All your sports teams gear under one roof. Man, it's one of the better crowds we've had this season. I was about to say, they have packed the same. And it was one of the first crowds this year, I will say, that they started filing in a little early. We've had a lot of crowds that come in right when the game starts. This stand, the stands were pretty full about 
20 minutes before game time, and they have only <laughs> they've only gotten bigger uh, over these past couple minutes. But I'm sure they're happy with that first drive from the Hanahan Hawks. That's what they like to do. They've had a lot of leads early. Let's see if they can keep the pressure on the Cyclones. Statement drive early from Hanahan. Opening two and a half minutes of this football game. Cooper Smith in from four yards out. Kick up the left sideline and wisely letting it go out of bounds was Grayer Hyatt. And Porter Gal will get the ball for the first time tonight. Procedure penalty, and Porter Gow, the Cyclones, get it at the 35-yard line in good field position to start this drive. First quarter score bug brought to you by David Ayler Law Offices, your client-focused, community-driven injury firm. We got the Porter Gow starters here. Yeah, Tony Brown gets the start at quarterback. We got a little banged up. Talking to some of their coaches and Brad Bowles this week. They're a little banked up, and uh, especially a quarterback, lost their quarterback with an injury two weeks ago, and Tony Brown gets his second start in as many weeks. Hartley Bickerstaff gets the first carry of the football game. John Settle, Grayer Hyatt, Henry Young, Ryder Bishop are the skill guys at offensive line. Frank Schmidt, Jacer Amer, Hayes Merchant, uh, Marchant, excuse me, Jack Fortson, and Porter Matthews. Hayes is my new favorite name this year. That's my new favorite <laughs> first name. He's got a, he's got a marketable name. Get a good nil deal. H a z e, not h a y s, like the uh, outfielder for the uh, the Orioles. Oh, in late a late flag comes in, maybe right in the area of face mask. As Brown kept it, and he got spun around and popped. Yeah, that was a big hit at the end there. I wonder if that had something to do with the flag coming in. This is where I get my rules confused. But high school's a helmet to helmet hit, and it's a personal foul. But I don't think you can do that on a ball carrier. College, obviously, you have targeting. NFL is also a helmet-to-helmet hit. Yeah. Looks like they're picking up the flag. Not sure if they're going to get a penalty on this one. Yeah, personal foul. They say they can, they'll say Hanahan came in and went to the head. And that'll be a Mr. Sparky first down. Now, the difference between high school and college, high school is not an ejection. There you go. go. I guess it's a little stricter in college, but. Bickerstaff and Settle back there with Brown, and this is Bickerstaff straight ahead. He'll pick up a couple of yards. Into the middle of that Hanahan defense. Mention those starters real quick. Kwame Parker, Kalani Roberts, Solomon Towns, Ian Ordonez on that defensive line. Linebackers are Ashton Drayton, Caden Gaddis, and Jay Meadows. John Blanchard raves about that linebacking core. Nathaniel Parson, Malik Ori, Ty Mouton, and Prince Shepard are the secondary. Off the left side goes Bickerstaff. He'll pick up another three or four. This right now is textbook Porter Gowd football. Yeah. Some option principles and just trying to pound away. You talk about uh, you talk about the quarterback in there too, Tony Brown. He's listed as a running back and kind of Swiss Army knife almost. He before he takes the started taking the snaps at quarterback, he was playing all across the field, and they're expected to use that a lot for tonight. And uh, he can really go, he can really line up anywhere. Uh, and right now he's at quarterback. Brown fakes the dive. Working for first down yardage gets very, very close. And it'll probably be about fourth and one. Boy, could that horn in this stadium be in a worse spot? <laughs> as soon when as was your night ruined? <laughs> as soon as it went off, this guy must be setting two rows in front of us. Uh, uh, perks of high school football. Perks of high school football. And it looks like it's short first down, but a risky move here. By Porter Gowd, they said we want to go for it on fourth and one on their own 30, on the opposing 31. Yeah, probably not much of a choice. Deep in opponent territory, it'll be a 48-yard field goal, give or take, and you're an option offense. I think you pound for a yard. 
Brown over the right side. Zaire Jackson picks up 10 and a first down. Well, you know what? If you need a yard and you got a 240 pound defensive end that's going to play college <laughs> football, hand it off to him. Let him be a fullback. God Full, does. God does it all. Fullback, quarterback through a 70 yard touchdown last week, uh, and we've seen him uh, in these first couple snaps. We've seen him a lot on offense. Just have him pound through. You need a yard. You know who you're going to. I was watching some of the highlights from last week, and I had to stop. And I was like. Does I hear Jackson just throw that football and then you see him carry it and you're like, he does everything. Looks like a nice carry there by, uh, I believe that was Bickerstaff or. Uh... It was. Bickerstaff would pick up a couple. Ori up from his safety spot to make the stop. That's a Boone Hall Fright Nights red zone opportunity as the Cyclones reach the 20 yard line. Midway point, first quarter. Porter Gow trying to trying to match an opening touchdown by Hanahan. Only a couple on second down for Jackson. Nice job of getting off his block right there at the nose with Solomon Towns to wrap him up. He gets off the bottom of the pile. You talked about Blanchard really raves about this linebacking core, and of course you got Ori in the safety spot who's going to be a guy who is getting a lot of looks to play on Saturdays. But this defensive line is where this game is going to be won for the Hanahan Hawks with all these running options coming through the middle. As it looks like we have a timeout to sort of talk over this third down. Brad Bowles asking for a timeout. His team facing probably about a third and four. Here late in the, here at the midway point of the first quarter, their opening drive. 7 nothing Hanahan early. Key play of the game up until this point, third and call it four and a half for the Porter Gowd Cyclones. They're about a foot into the red zone, trying to answer an opening touchdown by Hanahan. Brown kept it, faked it to Jackson. They, Jackson, they used him as a decoy. Brown spun down but might have lost the football. He did, and Hanahan comes out with it. Are they going to call him down, though? That's the question. Officials discussing it. You saw in the replay when he was spun around, that ball was very loose and out there. Wow. And a mistake by the young quarterback turning it over in the red zone. Wow, and that is, and that's going to be Caden Gaddis, the middle linebacker who comes up with that ball. And it, it was a great read by Tony Brown. He saw the defense collapsing on, on uh, Jackson. He took it out himself, tried to make a play with it, but the fundamentals they teach you. you got to tuck that ball in. Uh, big play for the hand and Hawks early in this game. Well, John Blanchard called Caden Gaddis earlier today one of his favorite players that he's ever coached. And when you start coming up with fumbles in the red zone, you're going to become even more of a favorite player, your head coach. Mr. Sparky first down on the first carry of this possession by Kayvon Rivera. And Rivera as good as advertised. 
certainly has potential at the next level. He is a big, strong, heavy back. And there he plows for 12 out of the shadows of their, goal, their own goal line and out to the 25-yard line. Going to be important for Porter Gow to try and come up with a little bit of an answer for this hand-to-hand -hand ground attack that's running strong here early. Cummings flips it out into the flat and has it complete. Ashton Drayton, an extended handoff, and picks up, we'll call it seven. Mills Knapp all the way to the sideline in pursuit. Zaire Jackson, Jason, Jacer Amer, Porter Matthews, Will Axon on the defensive line, James Ball, Ben Smith, Mills Knapp. At linebacker, Baker Lamberson, Kelly Carswell, John Settle, and Styles Harper. In the secondary. Second six. End around. Comes to Drayton. Flag came out quickly, usually in the area of holding. And Drayton popped out of bounds on the near sideline. Ooh. Almost took I take that back. That's not Drayton, two. That's number nine, Drew Goldsmith on the carry, but this one's coming back. Yeah. Unfortunately, that play meant nothing, and he took a lick at the end of that one. Looks like it might have been a holding on Hanahan. And it was a great, it was a great end around on this side uh, by Chase Anderson. I mean, they've run a couple end arounds with Chase Anderson before, but you got to make sure that offensive line, which we have raved in that first drive, did really well to uh, the offensive line did really well to help uh, get that touchdown uh, on that first drive for the Hawks. But making a little mistake there, it's going to back them up on this first drive, second drive. Little throwback screen complete. Coming all the way back across the field, Porter Gow did a nice job just continuing to push it to the boundary. Cummings rolled right, threw it all the way back. And that played just a little too parallel to the line of scrimmage the whole way. Malik Ori couldn't get free, and it brings up third down. And so the penalty right now, maybe the key play on this drive, third and 11 for the Hawks. It's probably been the longest play, that they, or longest conversion they've had to make all day. Uh, we know that Cummings can throw it, and this seems like an opportunity that they can do it. They're kind of slacking off the receivers a little bit, not pressing. Let's see what they do here. Cummings with time to the near sideline, has a receiver, Brayden Joseph, open, complete, Mr. Sparky first down. And that was a beautifully designed play by Blanchard. First down here. And... And just look, take a look at this. Cummings makes a great read. And when you slack off the receivers like that, Braden Joseph, a great catch there. You're going to see that's the little button hook routes that they run where you come back and they're playing a little bit of that zone coverage and they just take advantage. Zaire Jackson double team, and that was probably one of the key designs to that play. Here's another little stretch play and flags fly from every direction. This one's coming back. It's going to be another hold on the Jackson hand. was upfield, and <laughs> he was turning one way, and Kwame Parker had the front of his jersey, and that was an easy call for about three officials simultaneously. <laughs> so that'll come back 10 yards. I think they ever, like, compete on who can get that. Like, it's such a call like that. You think they just try to see who can throw it out first. Quickest flag. <laughs> Quickest flag gets the gets the bragging rights still for the day. Need a, still need a sponsor for something yellow. <laughs> We'll petition to get that on for some of the later games. I did serve like Service Master has to be perfect. Uh, <laughs> no free, no free advertising. <laughs> <laughs> you know, deal with stains. It makes sense. <laughs> All right, so, anyway. so it'll be a ten-yard penalty. It'll come back, and we can remind you it is a big night of high school football all across the Lone Country tonight. Join ABC News 4's Natalie Spala and our own Sean Mahoney, <laughs> who has a busy night ahead of him on Friday Night Rivals at 11.05. Scores, highlights from throughout the low country. Busy night, week number five officially on the calendar, but six if you count week zero as one. Well, week zero basically got, we got it happening. <laughs> it did, basically it got, got stormed out. out. Yeah. yeah, right there. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Natalie's great. Uh, 
really provide some good insight on low country. And uh, her and Scott have so much fun with that. So they walked off the penalty, and I think they went face mask and holding. And so it ends up being a one-yard gain on first down for Hanahan after all of that administrative work. Wow. 3.33 to play first quarter. Running room on first down for another Mr. Sparky first down for Kayvon Rivera. I take that back. That was Jaden Cummings keeping it, and he picks up 10 and moves the chains. Both offices are kind of utilizing this quarterback draw or uh, almost shotgun set. It really keeps the defense on their toes when you can be in that shotgun formation and you got a guy like Cummings who can go down the field, hit that A gap, and get that first down. John Blanchard said, he, he says, we only run a handful of plays, but we run them from different formations, and we run them well, and that's kind of what we do. And mm-hmm. you're seeing that here early. Cummings with time. Got to take a deep shot. Contact as the receiver collided with the DB about the 20-yard line, and that slowed down, I think, Ori just enough to force the incompletion. But you see the big arm from Cummings, 55 yards in the air, and nice coverage on the play. But I think Styles Harper. Might have been Baker Lamberson over there, but yeah. good job by these Porter Gowd Cyclones and these corners running with uh, Ori. Yeah, you got to make sure you keep up with that guy. He is fast, um, like we talked about, on both ends of the ball. And going back to what you said about Blanchard, yeah, they've lined up in the shotgun where you can have Cummings run for 10 yards, throw it deep, and get him under center with a little some jet sweeps. They really mix it up here, but it was a great show of arm strength by Cummings. Porter Gowd crowding the line of scrimmage. Quick throw by Cummings. Has numbers in his favor. Flag came in. That'll be a hold. And this one will come back. Looks like that Good hold. gain on the quick screen for Drayton, but all for naught. It looks like that hold's going to be on Braden Joseph. Uh, they run a lot of screens. We've seen, we've seen a decent amount of screens this time, but I think that's the third or fourth holding penalty that we've seen on Hanahan so far in this fourth quarter. And they're getting good chunks of yards on these plays. They just got to make sure they uh, keep their hands clean when they're making those blocks, especially on those screen plays where you've got a lot of room on that outside. You know, one thing that doesn't get, we'll talk about it after this play, but I want to bring something up that I just continually forget about high school football. <laughs> and it's, it's one of the more impressive things in sports, to be honest with you. Oh, I'm excited to hear it. <laughs> Give inside, running room for Rivera. Spins off a tackle, and he gets the penalty back and change. Didn't get to it earlier, but it's never too late. Let's get to keys to the game tonight. First for Porter Gowd. Key to the game is frustrating attack. It's a very it's a very complicated Porter Gowd defense. They'll split up their defense, do things on both sides of the field, and Hanahan really needs to adjust to that. They have to make sure they attack both sides of the field when the opportunity presents itself. And for Hanahan? Yeah, Hanahan needs that late-night success. We've talked about it all day. They find a way to win close games, and they've been doing it. But like we said, they're up now. They've had a lot of early leads, and they need to find a way to close. And like you were saying with that Porter Gow defense, they've run a lot of plays. This Hanahan offense run a lot of plays, too. they got to make sure they keep up. Keys to the game brought to you by Cruz Chevrolet. Cruz Chevrolet, you've got a friend in the car business. Cummings with a big run, and he takes it down near the 30-yard line on the keeper. And Hanahan chewing off yardage and trunk, chunks right now as we play the final two minutes of the first quarter. Uh, it's like you were talking about in the keys of the game. Porter Gowd needed to play that split coverage and really cover all their ends. But when you've got a guy like Cummings who makes, you got to respect his passing ability, but then also can beat you down the middle for 15 yards, it's hard to defend for those Cyclones. First and 10, Rivera. You don't have to work too hard to figure out which one he is. He's the one that's really hard to stop and just plows downhill. Picks up nine. I think he looked over at the sideline and said, I want to keep eating. You're going to give the Zeke cereal bowl. Feed me more. Mills nap. Kelly Carswell in on the tackle, but really just hanging on and bringing down the big back. And another time for the Boone Hall Fright Nights Red Zone. Feels like this is our third or fourth trip here in the first quarter. Great offenses on both sides. This time it's Cooper Smith. 
And Smith picks up a couple, and Hanahan chewing up yardage and chunks right now. Doing it all right in the middle of the field, running downhill. You saw Cummings a minute ago with the big gainer reading the defensive end and just took it straight up the gut. And this big offensive line is going to work. Tumbry, Towns, Bagwell, Mitchell, or Donez. Credit where credit is due. Yeah, you got to give credit to those big boys in the trenches, especially when you have a bigger boy running behind you. You got to make sure you give them a hole. Quick throw, Drayton in space. Fights for a couple down near first down yardage, but just short. And that should take us to the end of our first quarter. Impressive opening 12 minutes for the Hanahan Hawks. They score on their opening drive. They're looking for more on their second. All, by and large, almost all on the ground. Hanahan yeah. doing work right now. Yeah, great ground attack by Hanahan, and we'll see if they continue it up right after this commercial break. Hanahan making, looking to make it two for two on drives to open the football game. Third and two for the Hawks. They've been seemingly running downhill since the football game began at the 12-yard line. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Let's see if they continue that here. They got both their running backs in the backfield. Rivera and Smith both gotten touches. Rivera, he's been the workhorse. Porter Gout sniffed it out this time, right near the line to gain. It's going to be close. Official on the far sideline stopped it and came in and is going to award the West Shore Homes first down. West Shore Homes, America's most admired home remodeling brand. Porter Gout has a turnover near the red zone, in the red zone, on their opening drive, and they could really use one going the other way here. Yeah, they're gonna it, they're gonna need to get some sort of momentum going. That that ever since that they've had a long methodical drive by Hanahan, and they're looking to cap it off here. A little running room inside. Cooper Smith was the up back. Takes it. On the dive. Boy, I miss those days. That's the old Nebraska eye formation, <laughs> a little fullback dive. You don't see that anymore. You really don't. I think Nebraska ought to go back to it, but that's a whole other uh, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about that on Saturdays. <laughs> Joel McAvicka, Tommy Frazier. I was in Ireland the other week when Nebraska played Northwestern, and they, it was not a, not a great game. <laughs> Second and goal, ball at about the six-yard line. Rivera in motion. Gets it on the student body right, plows ahead near the goal line. Will they give it to him? Touchdown. Just a little half toss to Rivera, and he makes it work. 
The back half of that run was three yards and a cloud of dust. Tom Osborne would have loved it. <laughs> Trident Technical College touchdown and hand to hand two for two to open the football game. And this is something you want to see from your quarterback, Jaden Cummings. First off, a little bit of a misdirect, getting under center and getting the toss to the right as we see the uh, Palmetto Pride replay here. Uh, but the biggest thing I want to point out, Cummings not only makes the toss, immediately goes in and gets the block for Rivera, pushing forward with that big offensive line. Uh, great play all around by the Hanahan Hawks. Eric Johnson knocks through the PAT and Hanahan a 14-0 lead. To open the second quarter, impressive two opening drives for the Hawks. Rivera Cummings going to work on the ground. And Hanahan leads Porter Gowd on Friday Night Rivals. Game number five, week number five, 14-0 early second quarter. So the Hanahan Hawks flying early here at Hanahan High School, but uh, unlike the Hawks not doing it through the air, they're just doing it on the <laughs> ground and running you right over. They have a 14 nothing lead on Porter Gowd, and Kayvon Rivera, the running back, as good as advertised. Oh, my goodness, and he is a big body. When you see him running downhill, uh, if you're Porter Gowd, you want to try and get in the way, but if you're me or Zeke, we're, we're getting out of the way. <laughs> Too old for that. Too old. It does bring me back to my point about high school football in a minute. You'll have to remind me because we're going to go down to Bob on the sidelines here in just a second. Kickoff comes out to the 24-yard line. We're going to go down to the sidelines to Trooper Bob where we have our David Ayler Law Office's Educator Spotlight. All right, guys, I'm here with Principal Gallus here, $500 to the school here. What are some of the exciting things you're doing here at Hanahan High School? Well, this is a growing community, a growing school. A couple new things we have going. We have our first year having a, a boys volleyball, a South Carolina High School League competitive volleyball team. We just won our first match. It was, it was awesome. I was at the game, and it was a lot of fun. Our arts are growing and thriving. Our band is growing, arts, uh, our chorus, everything. It's, it's, uh, it's really fun to be a small part of that. One thing was excited to see where the kids get to run out with the team. I don't see that at every school. Well, again, this community is amazing. Tonight is our rec night, so we have a lot of our rec kids here, uh, football um, players, cheerleaders. And they got to run out of the tunnel with the Hawks. And, and look at this. This place is packed. I mean, this, you can't beat this community. This is, this is awesome. Great job. Thank you for your time. Great. Best of luck for the rest of the school year. I'll send it back to you guys. A run by Settle on first down. You know, one thing that's really interesting about this stadium, Sean, is it's the most intimate environment that we've been in mm -hmm. so far this season. It's closed in by the trees. It's up against the neighborhood. It's up against softball. It's up against baseball. It's a really tight, intimate atmosphere. It's a really cool. This is one of the best settings we've had so far this year. I'd definitely say that. And great crowd to go with it. I kind of feel like we're in the field of dreams almost. Like we kind of had to go through the woods to get here. But then once you're here, this is this is truly what Friday Night Lights is about. I, I love it. Porter Gown going to work on the ground. Second possession for the Cyclones. Tony Brown, nice job of operating the first, but a fumble inside the 20. Turned it back the other way. Smith. And Rivera each have a touchdown run for Hanahan. 
And Porter Gal looking to convert here early in the second quarter. Big play for Cyclones. How do you respond when you've gotten punched in the mouth this early? Running room, a couple of yards. It's going to be close. Is that Bickerstaff? And they're going to call it a fumble. It was settled. And Settle did lose it late in the carry, and Hanahan comes out of there with it. The Hawks have their second turnover of the night. And guess who it is again? Caden Gaddis once again getting the fumble recovery there. Huge play for the Hawks once again, and you can tell why Coach Blanchard raves about this kid. John Blanchard's been in the low country a long time. He played college football at Charleston Southern. He's in the Charleston Southern Athletic Hall of Fame. Raves about this football team. Says they work really hard. Really hard. And it's starting to show. 3-0 on the year. You don't win one-score football games without hard work. Yeah. And Hanahan has three wins of that variety this year. Cummings a little high over the middle. Wanted Joseph. Check that. That was Ori and just overshot his mark dangerous pass there but like you said you don't get to three and oh without uh, without a good football team and, and they've they've shown on defense too they have just been firing on all cylinders uh, running the ball down the field and making sure they get the ball back on defense and uh it, it's it's something to say about this offensive line this defensive line that it really starts with the interior for uh for the hawks here and uh, they could to have a commanding lead early on in this game. Porter Gowd really starting to crowd that line of scrimmage. Rivera toss sweep. Gets those shoulders north and south and bangs for about five. Third and five, but probably four down territory. Yeah. I think it was Baker Lamberson sticking his head in there. Also Ben Smith on the bottom of the pile. See John Settle getting up as well. Talk about high school football. Here we go. I'm going to wait one more play. Oh, We're going to get the third down play, and then I'm going to hit it. it. We've been waiting for it. it. It just blows my mind, and I forget <laughs> about it. And then you watch again every week, and you're like, how do those guys do that? <laughs> Under center this time. Smith, five hard-earned yards. is going to be close to first down yardage. Okay, high school football. Yes. Guys play both ways. Yeah. They play both ways for 48 minutes. It has to be exhausting. And so when you see Ori goes deep, and then he's sticking his nose in on a tackle and takes another deep route, it's exhausting, but it shows you the settles and the Ori's and Zaire uh, Jackson's. Yeah, how the, the shape that these, these young men are in. Yeah, there's some true athletes here on the field. And, and as we go back down to the field, a big play here. Fourth and one. Why not go back to... The same call you had on the last touchdown. A little toss to Rivera. Plows over that right side. And just too much weight running downhill. And that's following Tumbry, pulling from that left tackle spot. And it's just a condensed version of the old Bo Jackson, student body left, student body right. Yeah, just, just part the Red Sea, get all your blockers in front of your big man, and let them go to work. Uh, and... Back to what you were saying about the, these two-way, these two-way players. I mean, and it's not just one player. You see, you see multiple players on both teams that are playing both ways. And when you have players that can make an impact on both sides of the ball, it really helps your squad. And wow, what a missed opportunity! He's gonna wish he had that one back. Cummings puts the ball on the money for for. Uh, like that Braden Joseph and it just goes right through his hands. Braden Joseph has been around the field though so he's he's going to have a lot more opportunities through this game but that could have been a dagger early in the game. Maybe not dagger. I mean like we've talked about Zeke this Hanahan team they like to get up early but it's about this second half play that really comes to nip them in the butt sometimes. Inside running room for I believe Rivera. And he'll get half the yard, half the yardage needed for the first down. Picks up about five or six. Nice job covering for me there while I was having some mic issues. <laughs> yeah, we're playing both ways here. We're all we're commentators and we're also electricians, as we seem to have some some other problems as well. But Hanahan down here, 
nearing the 13-yard line, third down, looking to put some more points on the board. Here's Cummings. He throws to the left, and he's going to take it in. That's going to be Ashton Drayton on the touchdown. It's a Trident Technical College touchdown. Your future, your college. And he gets it out to the left side to Drayton, and Drayton does the rest of the work with his feet. And that will give the Hawks a three-score lead early in this game. And that's going to be a big play for uh, the Hannah Hannah Hawks. As it looks like uh, that was Ashton Drayton on the catch. Yeah, Ashton Drayton moving with his feet uh, towards the end of that play. And it looks like we got Zeke back now. Zeke, <laughs> you like that touchdown? <laughs> My mic button was a little touchy there for a minute. We were trying to figure out how to <laughs> get it to stick and work. Eric Johnson banks through the PAT. And Hanahan right now really taking control of this football game on the ground. 21-0 Hawks near the midway point of the second quarter. Palmetto Pride replay. And just a little screen. And That's just an extended handoff. That's all it is. There's two <laughs> defenders out there. There's two defenders out there. There's two receivers. You just throw it to the receiver with a little too much space, and you make an athlete tackle an athlete in open space, and Drayton won that battle. And they've run that play a couple times before with Drayton on the outside, but you know Blanchard, the difference between that play and the other ones was Blanchard came to his guys and said, do not hold, and those were some great blocks by the wide receivers there, uh, which looks like it was Braden Joseph on the outside and Malik Ori, great blocks by them, and uh, Drayton will take it to the house, and it is a great night here at Hanahan. Fan Cam, sponsored by the Fan Zone, and they are happy with this scoreboard, Zeke. Fan Cam sponsored by FanZone. All your sports team's gear under one roof as Porter Gow, good field position to start their third drive of the night. They need a touchdown drive. Solid return from Hyatt there for the Cyclones. Now, if you're the Cyclones, this you're getting into a little bit of danger territory. 21-0 down early. I know we're only halfway through the second quarter, but for me, I feel like you might start to see a little bit of the air attack on Cyclones. We've seen a lot of running, a lot of this option uh, with Tony Brown. But we're going to see some more Jackson running with running room. Jackson into the secondary, bouncing it outside. And Zaire Jackson has the biggest gain of the night for the Cyclones. Quickly counting 41 yards on the run, and just like that, Porter Gowd into Hanahan territory. Hey, good old announcer's jink. I say, hey, let's go pass it in the air. They go, no, we're going to hand it off to Jackson and his <laughs> give the big body some work. And, oh, my goodness, when you have someone that big and that explosive down the middle of the seam, great play by Jackson, great blocks by that offensive line. And Porter Gout right back in this uh, already with a huge gain on the first play of the drive. West Shore Holmes first down, Porter Gout on the move. Why not go back? To the guy who got you down here, Jackson, ahead for a couple. I'm not sure if that's an option read or if that's a called play, but there was definitely running room for a little option look on the outside for Settle and Brown had they decided to go that direction. And an injury on the play for Porter Gouge shaking up. And a little break in the action we'll use this time to remind you next week. We are up I-26 in Somerville for week number six of Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. The Green Wave play host to Stratford. Starting to see some of the big boys in the area. Mm -hmm. Those 5A teams, well, they come to play. And they, uh, and once, and this is the sort of, sort of the time of the year we're past some of those non-conference games and you start to really get into the meat of these team schedules. I mean, this is one example right here, hand hand and Porter Gout really testing each other uh, at this point in the season. Upcoming schedule on Friday night, Rivals. Games ahead. We said we'd be at Stratford and Somerville next week. Again, headed up to I-26. Berkeley at Wando in Mount Pleasant two weeks from tonight. And then Cane Bay at Goose Creek 
on October 14th. That's your upcoming schedule here on Friday Night Rivals. Yeah, we like you said, a lot of the big a, the big 5A teams, Somerville, Berkeley, Goose Creek, all of them are all of them are big powerhouse teams and uh, we got some good games coming up. Certainly a little bit a little bit of concern on the field right now and nice to see Great to see him. That's going to be uh, Henry Young. And good to see Henry Young, backup offensive lineman, junior, in that starting lineup tonight, coming off the field and um, banged up. But you can see him walk off under his own power, and that's never a bad sign. Yeah, that's always what you want to see. Uh, good to see that young man and hope that uh, he's going to be okay. Six thirty-two mark, first quarter. Porter Gout on the move, trying to answer. Or second quarter, <laughs> and Porter Gout on the move, trying to answer. Three touchdown drives by Hanahan to open this football game. Now, if you're Porter Gout, you have the Swiss Army knives of all Swiss Army knives in Zaire Jackson in the backfield. We've used him twice already on this drive. How quickly do you go back to him? Bishop is the wide receiver to the near side. Short shotgun for Brown. Takes it cleanly. Gives to Jackson. He'll pick up a couple. And brings up a key third, or down, third down for the Cyclones. Kwame Parker in on the stop. And what a crowd. Wow. Why do we keep running into Jersey night? We, this is the like third straight week of Jersey night. <laughs> they say Friday night rivals. They're like, oh, we're all going to wear our jerseys today. Now you got to pick one jersey. What jersey are you wearing? What jersey am I wearing? Yeah. Either they got some the throwback Nuggets jerseys with that rainbow color, or, um, oh gosh, or maybe those Utah Jazz, the John Stock. I liked that one last week. What about you? Uh, Peyton Manning, Tennessee jersey. Oh, uh, that's a little bias on your end. It is. <laughs> Song play a game or two. He third down play and stopped right in his tracks. Jackson. You could tell maybe the Hawks knew that one was coming. Yeah. If, if what I think every play on this drive has gone to Jackson, and Hanahan is saying, hey, beat us anywhere else, but we're not going to let you beat us with Jackson again. See if they can go to the outside this time. It looks like they're going to go for it on fourth down. Jackson and Bickerstaff. And settle the three backs back there with Brown. Settle in motion. Brown fakes it. Brown keeps it. And nothing doing over that left side. Hanahan stacks him up, and that'll be a turnover on downs. Might not be comfortable flicking it out there to settle on the option yet. And he's had it, had a chance to take it wide there a couple of times and hasn't done it. We'll see if that's something... Maybe Porter Gal tries to add on the fly. Again, Tony Brown's the backup quarterback and it's a spotty situation for Brad Bowles at QB right now. He's had some injuries. Nolan Schumann was the QB and he got hurt two weeks ago and was out last week against Ben Lippin and is out of the lineup again tonight. It's a great play by Kwame Parker on that too. And so for Tony Brown, it's a little baptism by fire, a little yeah. toss out in the flat. Not fun. Trying to tackle Rivera in the open field. The same take that back. That's actually Drayton. But Drayton, Rivera, <laughs> Smith. Um, who else am I forgetting out there at those skill positions? Yeah. Drayton and Malik Ori. Malik Ori in there. They're big physical for Hannah Ann. It's a good looking group. One of the better groups of uh, skill set guys we've seen this year so far at any level on yeah. Friday Night Rivals. Yeah. Power running from Smith right on cue into Porter Gowd territory and down near the 41-yard line. <laughs> he came up. He seen me like that contact. He takes that first hit, keeps going, gets up, clapping your face, give me more. Uh, like you said, this is a big body group, and they just hit you with so many different formations, and they have some really good play calling by Blanchard on the sidelines. We didn't. We didn't get to see the full 
the full set of uh, skill guys for Philip Simmons with Asbury and Stevenson because they were playing in basically a swamp yeah. <laughs> that night. James Island put on a show but were, were without their quarterback for much of the night. Yep. Palmetto Pride replay brought to you by Palmetto Pride. Litter trashes everyone. First down and 10 for Hanahan. Final minutes of the first half. It has been all Hawks so far. All. Smith will pick up about eight on first down, and that offensive line is just moving the line of scrimmage right now, just pushing it off the ball. Yeah, like you said, it starts with it starts with Jonathan Tumbry on the outside, but you also have Red Bagwell in the middle. Who uh, we've seen a lot of these runs go down the middle, and Bagwell and company has been creating those holes, giving those holes uh, those. Those gaps for Smith and Rivera, who, once they get ahead of steam, I mean, these run, runners, Zeke, they take those, they are great off the first two steps. They accelerate really quickly. And for big bodies, too, they are not, they are not small and quick. They are big, uh, but they are fast. And you're seeing the power of them here. Rivera bouncing off a tackle. Might not have needed to go backwards there. May have given up a few yards and might actually have come back behind the first down marker and so it might actually be third down that's a that's a decision he might like to have back hey he lost a shoe in the process maybe he said (laughs) he took one shoe and then was like okay (laughs) but yeah cave on rivera he does it all running back linebacker kicker and uh yeah he didn't need a break to put back on his shoe (laughs) so third down and a foot and they they're actually going to give Rivera forward progress forward progress, and say he was pushed back. And so that is a West Shore Homes first down for Kayvon Rivera. America's most admired home remodeling brand, West Shore Homes. And as you look at our Cruise Chevrolet score bug here on Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruise Chevrolet, 21-0 Hanahan over Porter Gallup. Two and a half minutes to play until halftime. Rivera, it's just it's a battering ram. <laughs> and really trying to go to work on the front of that Porter Gal line. James Ball, Mills Knapp in on the tackle. Baker Lamberson. It's a fun name to say. Baker Lamberson. <laughs> you talk about all the different looks that Hanahan can give you. And we were talking about the game. That's what the defense did. And need to switch up the defense force Hanahan to switch up the offense, but they've been doing a lot of the same running plays, just switching up which gaps they're going in, if they're going to pitch to the outside, if they're going to have Rivera go up the middle, and it's been working like a charm. Little toss to Rivera. Cuts it back inside. Got a nice block on the outside, and he'll get close to first down yardage and close to the red zone. And what's Wait, th- three weeks from now, when we're doing the red <laughs> zone, it's going to be ooh. ooh. Yeah, exactly. Almost there. We'll, we'll wait to say it once we're there. Sales team does a great job. They get creative. and uh, <laughs> Whoever did this deserves a raise. <laughs> it's high school football. It's Friday night. Why not have fun with it? Yeah. And that's what we're doing. Hanahan, well, they're doing work. Hawks with a minute to play until halftime, trying to put one more score on the board. Jaden Cummings. Time in the pocket. Now it collapses. Has this pass complete out wide for the first down. And officially, Sean, it is the Boone Hall Fright Nights red zone for Hanahan Hawks. Fourth time they've been here today, if I'm not mistaken. Make your screams come true. Yeah, don't forget the tagline. Yeah, the most important part of it. But uh, oh, it, they, this trio of Ashton Drayton, Kayvon Rivera, and Cooper Smith have just been deadly today when you have the one-two punch of Rivera and Smith and Drayton has been catching everything for uh, for Hanahan today and if you're Porter Gowd when would you go back into the locker room at halftime as we got a little under a minute left in this first half as you see the West Shore of Homes first down for Hanahan when you go back in the locker room at halftime you got to think how are we going to slow this offense down what adjustments can we make on defense you got to start bringing a little more pressure and trying to really force this hand-to-hand offense into uncomfortable situations. 
and it's going to need a wake-up call. But like we said, no one's out of it. Philip Simmons, or excuse me, Hanahan, has had leads like this before and has squandered them in the second half. And it would be a big, it might not seem like a lot, but if, if Philip Simmons can keep Hanahan out of the end zone before the halftime, that would be a big step to trying to get the momentum back on the Cyclone side. We've talked about too many high schools in the year at Porter Goud. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Porter Goud. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> so 48 seconds to play until halftime. Hanahan in the red zone, first and 10. Two receivers either side for Cummings. And Cummings drilled as he throws, but a flag comes down. Looks like he might have got a head start on that tackle. We, we talked about our keys to the game when we got to those in the first quarter, and one of the things was late-night success for Hanahan. They've been in this position before where they played very well in the first half, did it yep. a week ago against Timberland. Important not to relinquish the lead now that you've earned it here in the first half when we go to the second half. They, they've given up the big leads before. They've played three one-score games. They've controlled this football game. Important for them not to relinquish control in the second half. It's that old phrase, keep your foot on the gas. And Philip Simmons is going to look for – or for, Porter Gout, okay. Porter Gout is going to look for uh, any opportunity for them to try and get back in this game. And Hanahan, they, a little bit of a backup there, but – they really need to keep the pressure on, and they've been doing a great job. Brennan was dominating almost every possession of this game. But it's going to be a big possession for them here at the end of the half. So first and 15 after the procedure penalty. They add five seconds back onto the game clock. Cummings rolls to the near side. little jump pass nearly had intercepted, and I think got it complete for maybe a yard. That was a whole lot of work to dump it to Drayton, but Drayton squeezes it, and he's run out of bounds. I always feel like there's that extra heartbeat in the final minute or two minutes of the first <laughs> half in high school football where everybody takes a deep breath and goes, okay, what are we doing again? And I yeah. feel like the officials sometimes get to be the worst about it. Just, oh, yeah. What penalty? How much on the clock? Let's figure yeah, this yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You get into those last moments where you're like, okay, we're almost there. And it stalls a little. Yeah. Jennings, uh, Cummings, excuse me, trying to set up the throwback, and he has it complete, but Porter Gowd sniffed that one out as Malik Ori caught it but picked up only maybe a step. That's crazy to say. We said Malik Warrior was our player to watch for the game. I mean, he's obviously more of an impact on defense, but we haven't really. He's been on a lot of snaps on offense, and we've had so much success from Rivera Smith and Drayton that he hasn't had to do too much. But uh, if you unlock him, this could get a lot worse uh, for the for Porter Gab. Mills Nap, nice job of trailing Ori there to make the play, and Hanahan now faced with a third and thirteen. With 40 seconds to play in the first half. Upcoming games for these two teams. Hanahan, they'll get a good test next week from Woodland. We saw Woodland last week, and Zadarius Harrison, the quarterback from Woodland, oh, yeah. put on a show against Bishop England, had three rushing touchdowns, and he's tough to chase. That'll be a fun football game to see who yep. wins next week. And Porter Gow, they are at Trinity Collegiate to close out September. Yeah, that Woodland, that Woodland quarterback, he is, in my opinion, from what we saw and what, from the games we've watched so far, one of the best players in the low country. Yes, uh, Zadarian Harrison. Zadarian Harrison, yes. And I, I'm pretty sure I said it wrong every time last week. <laughs> it's okay. I it's just almost its own tongue twister. Third down, 14. Cummings with time. Cummings steps up. Fires for the end zone. Oh. Open, complete, touchdown. Drew Goldsmith found space. Cummings had room to step up toward the goal line, and he made Porter Gowd pay. Another Trident Technical College touchdown for the Hanahan Hawks. Trident Technical College, your future, your college, but great poise in the pocket, pocket from Jaden Cummings. Yeah, Cummings, I mean, <laughs> what a throw by Cummings. He really uh, pressure on him, too. It looks like he might have got nicked in the arm. But Drew Goldsmith, great catch on the other end, too. And 
that is exactly the exclamation point you want if you're Hanahan and if you're Porter Goud. Hopefully it's the motivation you need. Let's go down to the sidelines. Trooper Bob has a front row seat for what this Hanahan team's doing right now. Bob, what do you see down there? You know, there is some point where you start putting in the second string. But as far as Principal Gellis was talking about family night, you see everybody from young kids all the way to the adults. No one's left the stadium. Everyone's packed. And trust me, I'm glad you just uh, came to me right now because when there's a score a touchdown, you can't hear for about two minutes. <laughs> yeah, we can't hear up here either, Bob. <laughs> and I wonder, it must have even more deafening down there. Just a really great atmosphere for high school football. Just like I said earlier, tight, intimate, surrounded by trees. We didn't get a chance to fill out Philip Simmons because the weather was just brutal. Yeah. And the student section showed out, but understanding maybe the community, eh, not tonight. <laughs> but uh, we've had some good atmospheres this year, but uh, Hanahan certainly right there at the top. Fort, obviously, incredible oh, every yeah. time you go to Fort Dorchester. Yeah, they got a history. Johnson's kick. Taken by Hyatt, and he gets out across the 20-yard line. And it'll be first it's in there for Porter Gowd. Well, you know, right on cue. It was uh, <laughs> yesterday was the first day of fall. and We had a little bit of a hurricane, you know, kind of the yeah, winds coming yeah, in. Yep, and yep. A little funky weather day. And then today, fall is here. Fall is here. Hopefully it'll stay. But. I've loved this weather for tonight's game, and uh, I'm sure that all the students, fans, and even the players feel good, play good, and Hanahan certainly has been playing good today. End around for Settle. He has some running room over the left side. Nice run. Best one of the night for John Settle. Has 15, make it 17 yards out across the 41-yard line as Porter Gallup trying to attack the boundary a little bit. And they'll use the timeout. And so likely the final play of the first half. What are you trying to draw up here? Well... If you're a Porter Gout, it's you got one of two ways you can go with this. You can either send it right to halftime, maybe a, just a run play up the middle, or take a shot deep. Why not? I mean, with the scoreboard the way it is, you really don't have anything to lose. If you can get something on misdirection and time to throw, maybe go to the back side. Not sure they have that vertical receiver out wide, but yeah. if you can get everything going one way and throw back. Maybe you can catch Hanahan sleeping. They don't have too many people deep, but they also have a tight formation on the offense. Settle in the slot. There's a play fake by Brown, now trying to buy time. Nice job escaping by Tony Brown and has running room. Brown takes off, chased down in Hanahan territory, and that is how the first half will end, but an exciting finish. Wow. Porter Gowd a cup, pops a couple of big ones, and had they had one more snap of the ball, who knows what would have happened. Yeah. So a positive to finish the first half for the Cyclones. And now let's go down to the sideline. Trooper Bob is with John Blanchard. Hey, Coach, very commanding lead, 28 to nothing. Are you happy with your team's performance? Yeah, we're doing, we're doing well. We're blocking people, doing catching the ball, spreading it out. Um, defense, we need to tighten up a little bit, but our offense, I'm really happy with them. Excellent, Coach. Thank you very much. Best of luck on the second half. Hanahan in control at halftime. 28 points for the Hawks in the first half. They score on all four possessions. They lead Porter Gow 28 nothing. Week number five of Friday Night Rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet.
Triple Pride Halftime Report. Time report on Friday night rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Palmetto Pride litter trashes everyone. You know, Hanahan's put on a show here tonight. Why wouldn't they put on a show with their band? Get ready to check out the Hanahan High High School Marching Band. 28 nothing. the Hawks lead Porter Gowd at halftime. Each week, the David Ayler Law Offices and Riders Law Group is proud to highlight a scholar athlete from each participating school. The students elected or the selected will have an opportunity to win a $5,000 scholarship at the end of the season. Tonight's scholar athletes are first for Hanahan, Brooke Jones, 5.25 GPA softball and volleyball standout. She's committed to Texas A&M Corpus Christi to play, vo- uh, to play softball. She volunteers as a special ed teacher at Hanahan Elementary almost weekly. She's a member of the Beta Club, National Honor Society, and a Special Olympics volunteer brooke jones from hanahan high wow and for porter goud kelly carswell stand out in football and track 4.24 gpa he is the chairman of the honor council member of youth in government his track team the porter goud track high school team holds a number of school records he's a part of some of those school records in track and a starter on the football team Now let's go to Scotty Eisberg, who is with David Ayler, talking about how important these scholar-athletes are. David Ayler of the Ayler Law Offices joins us right now. Not sure what, of, uh, what type of high school athlete you were, but, but you are certainly a giver to high school athletes who are smart here in the low country. I played baseball up until I got to high school, but then I got involved in the music and was in a band. Not the band, but a band, and uh, that was the direction I went and said. How important is it to you to give back to the community to kind of uh, you know generate this new generation of, uh, of scholars, if you will? Yeah, it's really important. A lot of things we do within our law firm is related to the community and community focus. Uh, we don't really just try to receive from the community, we try to give back and you can't think of a better way of giving back than giving back to youth, particularly youth that have uh, performed so highly and uh, will continue to do well throughout their life and you know be such a positive influence on others uh, you know, to come thereafter. David Ayler of the Ayler Law Offices presenting our Scholar Athlete of the Week. We'll be right back with more from the Palmetto Pride Halftime Report.
Welcome to the Palmetto Pride Halftime Report. First number is going to be a six here very shortly, and it feels fantastic compared to where we were a month ago. 8.55 p.m. in the Hanahan High School Archie Band performing down below. Hey, fans, want to remind you, we're giving you an opportunity to vote for tonight's Delta Force All-Stars Cheer of the Game. Log on to abcnews4.com forward slash poll and vote for either of tonight's cheer squads. Both Hanahan and Porter Gaub featured there online. We're going to show you those videos here in a second. Cast a vote for the Delta Force All-Stars. Cheer the game results later tonight in the show. Here are the two cheer squads. Once again, a reminder to vote for the Delta Force All-Stars cheer of the game. Hanahan High School marching band putting on a show. Hanahan offense also putting on a show. They lead Porter Gowd 28-0 at halftime on Friday night arrivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Meadow Pride Halftime Report. Halftime Report. 28 0 Hanahan. Leading Porter Gout at halftime here at Hanahan High School. Wiley Knight Stadium. 
All Hawks on the ground in the first half. Tonight's trophy and scholar-athlete plaques at the end of the season are provided by All-American Awards. All-American Awards helping Charleston recognize excellence since 1993. Winner of tonight's game. Also get a trophy at the end of the night. Kids love trophies. Everyone loves a trophy. Everyone loves a trophy. <laughs> Hanahan High School marching band deserves a trophy. Halftime, 28-0. Hanahan leads it. We have one more break to take, and we'll be back for the second half kickoff. All Hawks right now, 28-0 here at Hanahan High School. I know it's kind of loud. Yeah, it's all right. Hey, Coach, you still have another half to play. What's the message to your team for the second half? Yeah, well, I think we've got we to finish drives, we've got to finish plays, and we can't, we can't have any turnovers. That's been the biggest problem right now. Any major changes? No, just we've got to hold on to the football. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. Yeah, well, I think we've got to we got to finish. Both teams out of the locker room. Both teams out of the locker room warming up for the second half. Hanahan with a 28 0 lead over Porter Goud here on Friday Night Rivals, week number five. We're going to go down to the sideline. Trooper Bob with Porter Goud head coach Brad Bowles. Hey, coach, you still have another half to play. What's the message to your team for the second half? Yeah, well, I think we've got to we got to finish drives, we've got to finish plays, and we can't we can't have any turnovers. That's been the biggest problem right now. Any major changes? No, just we got to hold on to the football. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck in the second half. Yep. Porter Gowd with work to do here in the second half, and Hanahan may end up having a little too much firepower for him, but you want to go back to your basics. You know, if you're Brad Bowles, you, you want to run your base offense. You want to see your offensive lineman try to control the line of scrimmage a little bit. And execute your offense. See if you can't. See if you can't put together a couple of good drives. Because they moved the football early, and they moved it right up until the half. They just could not hold on to it and put together drives. If they can put together one or two, maybe things can get kind of wild in the fourth quarter. And like you said, you want to lean on your power players. You have Zaire Jackson. Uh, Tony Brown has been able to do some cool stuff, especially at the end of that half. Uh, as, as you know, you have these great players on offense that have been doing really well for you in this game, and you just want to make sure you give them those opportunities. Friday Night Rivals Fan Cam presented by Fan Zone. All your favorite sports teams gear 
in one place. Hanahan High School students still hanging around, supporting their Hawks. Just about set for second half action. It has cooled off considerably here. <laughs> yeah, saying something. <laughs> and remembered James Island about, I guess it was four weeks ago, and it just was a sauna. <laughs> Concrete press box, sun beating right in your face, and now finally nice to have some cool air in the Charleston area, and it cooled off. Quickly. Porter Gal will get the ball to start the second half. You know, I'm Here's a look at the man of the hour. Kayvon Rivera. He has been a workhorse. He has Steve Blanchard's team up 28-0 through 24 minutes. And like I comment on your screen, isn't too shabby himself. Quarterback has been dotting up this uh defense and now this is like we said Zeke this has been Hanahan's uh, biggest task for the day is making sure they hold on to this lead uh, they've had a lot of success in the first half but had some games come back uh, make it a little close they have they are 3-0 pulled out the win but you want to make sure that you uh, keep the pressure on in the second half Porter Gal will have it to start the second half, and exactly what we did not need, offsides on Hanahan on the kickoff, so it'll come back and go back five yards. Well, let's hope that's not a sign of things to come. <laughs> I'll say sometimes, you know, the, the, the timing rules in high school football change from stadium to stadium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they ran 25 seconds off the clock, and then they, they reset it back to 12 minutes. They reset it. There you go. <laughs> so our second chance at starting the third quarter. Really good atmosphere at Hanahan High School tonight. Hawks put on a show in the first half. The show started pregame with fireworks and the helmet tunnel. Mm -hmm. it must help the teams morale when you have this type of atmosphere uh, no question you rally around it low line drive kick from johnson hyatt takes it on the far side of the field finds running room out across the 30 35 out to the 37 yard line best starting field position of the night for porter gout greater hyatt a nice return there and Tony Brown will come back out. They've had a couple of sustained drives, but they have not been able to punch it into the end zone just yet. Let's see if they go from Tony Brown. They also have Zaire Jackson in the back, who's been the workhorse for them. They go back to them starting the second half. Brown, little option look, cuts it back to the middle, and he'll pick up. Oh, five or six and a good option run there for Brown, the sophomore quarterback. The year that the graduation year is listed on the Porter Gout roster, so every time it's just simple math. I just have to count one, two, or three, sometimes four. But every every time I look at it, I have to think. Okay, we have a sophomore, this, junior. You're like, this year's 2022. And exactly. So then we're in the fall. <laughs> Jackson in the backfield was settled behind Brown. Brown keeps it this time himself, and he slung down near first down yardage out at the 44 yard line. Cyclones will need two. A great tackle there. By Jay Meadows in on the mix. Nathaniel Parson. Yeah, great tackle. Yeah, Daniel Parsons, Jay Meadows, that interior line, especially when you have a quarterback like Anderson who likes to, or uh, Brown, excuse me, likes to run it a lot. It's good to have that off, uh, defensive line pressure, especially in those gaps. This Porter got offense built for these third down and one situations. Brown to Jackson. Well, he's stuck in the hole. He got the first down, but big hit, sticking his news in there was Caden Gaddis. Well, if you wonder why he's one of Steve Blanchard's all-time favorite players to coach, it's because he'll take on a defensive end right in the hole 
and go face mask to face mask with him. He's got a lot more uh, cojones than I do. I would <laughs> not well, want to. Not one of my notes is loves to hit, and he showed it there. <laughs> it's a Mr. Sparky first down for the Cyclones, though. Mr. Sparky, Mr. Sparky's is America's on-time electrician. Like I said, Mr. Sparky, one too many times there, but we don't charge him any extra for that. A couple of yards on first down for Tony Brown, working the left side. How many times do you say Mr. Sparky fast? <laughs> I think Brad Bowles probably likes what he sees on his team from the first possession. Good kickoff return and an initial first down executing the offense. And you don't need to probably a little outmanned right now is Porter Gowd, and they're just trying to put together a couple of good drives. Well, you took the words right out of my mouth. You don't need to get it all back in one drive. You don't need to go for the home run ball off it. Just work your way down the field, try and get in that end zone as we have a great run here. Settle working the right side, has first down yardage into Hanahan territory, and he'll cap that at just shy of 15 yards down inside the 40-yard line. So John Settle out of a couple of ankle tackles. Great. And finally chased down and knocked out of bounds, I think, by Prince Shepard. But not before he picks up 15 and Porter Gout on the move to open the uh, third quarter. Reminder, third quarter score bug brought to you by David Ayler Law Offices. Your client-focused, community-driven injury firm. It's a great job by Settle getting to the outside quick. And great job by the offensive line. We've been talking about uh, Porter Gout's offensive line all night. Scoreboard might not show, but they've been doing a great job. Same play the other way. Settle trying to stretch it out. Flag comes in. Another one follows. And you got to think this one might be coming back. Zaheer Jackson asking for a little bit of a breather from the sideline. And the penalty will back up. Porter Gout after a couple of first downs to open this drive. Looked like a hole right in the middle of that offensive line. Yep. Once you get those hands out away from your body and get a big old handful of jersey, that one's an easy <laughs> for an official. It's like they, they teach you when you're in peewee football. You want to go straight directly into the shoulder pads. You don't want to grab either way. You know, back in my day when I was a tall, lanky sixth grader, I was a great offensive lineman. Then I grew seven inches. <laughs> Good look at Hugh Matthews there in at center for Porter Gowd. And Jackson a couple of yards running over that right side. Some fresh legs and fresh bodies getting in there along that front. Frank Schmidt started. He's in along that line for the Cyclones. We've seen Hartley Bickerstaff quite a bit tonight. Porter Matthews still out there. Jack Fortson, they've had to shuffle the offensive line off and on this uh, this evening. So after the holding penalty and a couple of yards on the run a second ago, it's second and 17. Brown, there's the toss and the option to settle. Gets back the penalty yardage. It'll set up third and 10. You could tell they wanted to go outside with it, or at least it was there in the first half. And that exact same read, but maybe that's something they have not been able to coach and kind of teach with Brown a whole lot because he's is still very young. He's the backup quarterback. It's and it, it's one thing to talk about it and go through the dry reps or the the undefended reps in practice. It's a whole other to throw him out there against a three A public school and say, "Go get it, young man." Yeah. Need you to need you to read this on Friday nights with live bullets flying at you. Yeah, definitely not an easy task, especially for someone who's coming in off off the bench. And it's just some growing pains, but he's been doing pretty well for for a lot of these read option plays, as you see one here. There it is, the other side. Gets it out to settle late, gets five yards. Got to take the hit. As I hear Jackson, he got his ankle rolled up on in the middle of that line. And this is not something we wanted to see. It looked like he just was rolled on late, rolled up on late in the play. Don't want to see that. A 
Zahir Jackson shaking up for Porter Goud. Wow. And it'll bring up fourth down. 28 0 Hanahan. They lead near the midway point, third quarter. Well, Friday night Jackson was running room. Jackson Chevrolet. into the secondary. Bouncing it outside. Power running from Smith right on cue into Porter Gow territory and down near the 41 yard line. <laughs> you can't believe me like that contact. He takes up. Fourth down seven for Porter Gow to open or to try and keep this drive alive to open the third quarter. Brown would settle and Bickerstaff behind him. Two receivers to his right. Little screen flips it out wide. Has a complete to Ryder Bishop and Bishop near first down yardage but I think he came up a yard short. And so Hanahan holds to open Seven. The third quarter, and the Hawks will get the football back. One good, one good thing to point out: Zaire Jackson did jump up under his own power and walk off. So, looks like he just got that ankle tweak just a little. May not see him again tonight. He's such a key part of everything they do, offensively and defensively, and in the passing game, as we learned last week. <laughs> yeah. Big body throwing 70 yards. He is a freak of nature. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, no. He's out there on the left side. Ankle must be okay. Glad to see him back out there. And Hanahan right back to work. They pick up five or six on first down. How many times have we said that tonight? <laughs> the push, even if there's not a hole, the push is there for the Hawks. And number five just always seems to get five yards. Kayvon Rivera. Their average yards per play, I think tonight, has to be around four to five, at least on the ground with what we've seen from Smith, Rivera, and even a couple runs from Cummings, too. Uh, their ground game has just been fantastic tonight. Might even be a little more than that. Twenty-eight zip Hawks lead, and Cummings looking for a little bit of running room and pounds his way for about a yard. Steve Blanchard and company probably content with this lead to keep Jack that clock Cummings moving. In the yard on the at Woodland, at North Charleston, at Batty, Battery Creek, Philip Simmons, at Beaufort. It's a really, it's a really <laughs> good region this year. Woodland is very capable. Unbeaten, if I recall correctly, 4-0. Yes. I think they were 3-0 last week when we had them on Friday Night Rivals, and they beat Bishop England. Rivera, gaping hole here. Into Porter Gow territory and down at the 40 yard line. He'll have 20. And that'll be another Mr. Sparky first down for the Hawks. You look at this this region though, Woodland unbeaten, Hanahan unbeaten. There's a battle of unbeatens if we can move Friday Night Rivals next week. There you go. Phillip Simmons is capable. We saw them and they impressed. And Buford is a 4A team that played for a state championship a year ago. 
And they're now 3A. Yeah. And so. <laughs> there's no game you can look at on the table on that schedule. Even North Charleston Battle Creek, there's no game you can look on and say, hey, this is something we can check off. It's a tough region for these Hawks, but uh, they if they play like they do tonight, they'll be really good competition in this this time for Cummings. Held it for a long time. Got hit from behind and has it nearly intercepted. Oh. Styles Harper is going to want that one back. Will Axon was bearing down on Jaden Cummings, and the sophomore held that one just a little too long. Yeah. There it's has to be a clock on that backside in your head. Yeah, I know. And I mean, when that ball, when you're staring up at that ball too, you gotta wonder who's coming up on you. Uh, a great heads-up play by Harper just to be in that vicinity. Uh, but I know that's one that he's gonna wish he had back right there. Axon got a piece of Cummings' arm as he threw, and there's a good look on the Crew Chevrolet replay. Crew Chevrolet on Rivers, you've got a friend in the car and business, Styles Harper, giving us the highlight there. Second down 10. Hawks back to what they do. Cummings picks up six or seven. And it'll bring up third and manageable. Cummings got some moves. Nice spin move to spin out of that tackle. And uh, and I, I want to go back to the run before uh, the drop, almost dropped in, or the dropped interception that we saw. Uh, Rivera, he just runs, and he looks so enthusiastic almost when he runs. He wants to bang down that uh, gap. He wants to get in your face and eat that contact. He always comes up with a little bowl of cereal saying feed me more. So this team plays with a lot of enthusiasm. Third and five. Rivera in the open field brought down. Is that Tony Brown? That might be Tony Brown. I think it is. Tony Brown, the quarterback, <laughs> flying up from a corner spot to make the stop. Oh. And it'll be fourth down and five. Wow. Remember what I said earlier about things that impressed me about high school football? Both ways. That young man is playing quarterback, and he's also playing cornerback. And he's coming up and making crucial tackles on third down, too, not just staying in the back. And he's going to stay out there for this fourth down as well. Fourth and six for the Hawks. They need the 31-yard line. Student body left for Smith. He has the first down, and Hanahan will move the chains. Another Mr. Sparky first down. Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. And Hanahan just said, we're going to toss it to big number 20 and go student body left, but we're going to keep it tight and yeah. run downhill. We've seen that play a lot where you have the right guard and right tackle pull over to the left side and just say, follow my lead as we see the replay sponsored by Crew Chevrolet. And what Coop a great Smith. play design. You never see, you don't see it in college because quarterbacks just don't block that much, but you can do it in high school football. More on that in a second. Cummings just has to dump it, and it's incomplete. And that's our guy. Zaire Jackson harassing him. Ashton Drayton didn't really have a chance at that football. But the way they turn and they toss it, Cummings is a big kid, so he can turn and he can run downhill with the offensive lineman, and you really pick up an extra blocker. It's, it's almost like a direct snap with an extra blocker in there. Ordonez, Mitchell both pulling to convert that third down, that fourth down. It's unique. I mean, and I know that a lot of other organizations, like when you look at the, other, the upper levels like college and NFL, you're obviously not going to have a quarterback go out and block too much, but if I'm in that huddle and I see Cummings go out and leading my blocker, I'm getting hyped. This is our leader, and he's getting out there, making sure you get those extra yards. Vera bouncing outside and breaking free. Did he find the end zone? I haven't seen a signal. Yes, now we do. Touchdown, Kayvon Rivera. That is a Trident Technical College touchdown. Try to technical college, your future, your college. And Rivera with a huge run. There is a flag on the play back towards the line of scrimmage. And unfortunately, this one's going to be coming back. It was a great run by Rivera. Looks like he was down early and was able to come back. Was able to, to cut back and really turn that edge and get to the corner. But... A hold on, the offensive line is going to bring this one back, but 
So you see Coach Steve Blanchard there. He's got to be happy with the effort there. Probably not happy with the holding call. My mic dropped out right in the middle of the run, so I'm kind of happy that, you know. You got call back. <laughs> so the touchdown comes off the board. Still 28 nothing, And Hanahan backed up. They'll have it second and 17. And more running room. Rivera again, almost an instant replay. And just hanging on for dear life and slinging him down as Mills nap. But not before Rivera picks up 15. Good tackle by Nap, but Rivera, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep feeding the beast there. And uh, he he doesn't like going down with that first tackle. He wants to, he likes the contact. He enjoys the contact as we saw the crew Chevrolet replay there. Uh, great run. So third down three, knocking on the door of the red zone are the Hawks. And Steve Blanchard will ask for a timeout. Just kind of feel like Hanahan wants one more last good touchdown drive. And they'll have this one in control and can, can kind of start getting maybe some extra reps for some of these younger guys of the 24, 25, 26 classes. Yeah, you always want to see those guys get reps, especially, you know, when they're on Friday Night Rivals, get a little chance to be on TV. And and it's, it's always good to be in this position, too. You you We've had a lot of talk about Hanahan kind of slowing down late and haven't seen that so far. Friday Night Rivals next week makes the trip, as we said earlier, up to Somerville, up by 26. <laughs> you and I, we're going to have to allow some time drive. to get there and <laughs> leave Mount Pleasant on Friday <laughs> afternoon to get to Somerville as a commitment. So, but headed up to uh, Somerville. A little 5A action between Somerville and Stratford next week. Following week, Berkeley travels down to Mount Pleasant to face Wando and Cane Bay a week later. The two rivals meet up in the Goose Creek area, Cane Bay at Goose Creek. Goose Creek. Myself and Sean Mahoney will have the play by play of all three of those. Hard to believe we're at the uh, midway point of the 2022 version of Friday Night Rivals. Feels like we're just getting started. Fourth down, end of round, Cooper Smith. Hit at the line of scrimmage, but bounces off a tackler and picks up a first down. Hit your quarterback, Tony Brown, sticking his nose in there, trying to make the stop <laughs> on the third down run, but couldn't do it. And, Sean, I'm going to give you the honors. We are in the red zone. The Boone Hall Fright Nights red zone. You know what that means, Boone Hall fr Fright Nights. Make your screams come true. I'm having fun with that today. It's so we, we, I, we you, I live near the Boone Hall um, on an on house setup, and it's just there year round. <laughs> Cars down the street for miles when it's in use, but when it's not, it's still there. Let's it's, go away. Cummings to the end zone. Ah, oh, dropped. Crossing route. Braden Joseph had it in the bread basket. It hit him right in between the one and the zero and couldn't come up with it. Oh, that's going to be one he really wants back. Braden Joseph, Steve Blanchard telling us he's a man that, a uh, player that, you know, man, has stuck with the program. His work ethic has made him kind of a go to receiver for this team. Good blocker, good route runner. And he'd like to have a chance to put his hands on that one before it got to his shoulder pads again. Wouldn't be surprised if they looked his way again. He's been lining, out, lining up a lot on the outside and been one of the premier pass targets for this Hawks offense. Drayton's in the slot. Jo Goldsmith to the near side. Take that back. Joseph to the near side, and that's going to be that little screen we've seen a few times to Drayton. They have a touchdown on that to Hanahan. And here they pick up the first down boot inside the 10-yard line, make it first and goal to six. And we've seen a lot of tackles. I want to go back to something. We've seen a lot of tackles by uh, Tony Brown on this drive. How about these quarterbacks in the age of quarterbacks who might not want to get their hands dirty or might want to stay back in the pocket and not do too much? These guys are willing to dive in as we dive into this coverage of this third down. Toss sweep, little short toss, running room. Rivera plows his way, as does his offensive line, and the Hawks have their fifth touchdown of the night. Just that little short toss and full speed ahead for Rivera and company, Hanahan. 
another Trident technical college touchdown. Yeah, and I, it's easy to, when you got a couple yards to gain, who do you give it to? Your big man, Rivera, who's been with it all night long. And Hanahan in control. Johnson. A perfect five for five on PATs here tonight. There's a good look at Kayvon Rivera, and there you see, same play the other way. Cummings, <laughs> little toss. And Rivera, all he has to do is follow his lead blockers. A lot of pancakes there, making sure they get the hole just right for Rivera. And and a great job by that offensive line, as we saw in that replay. Presented by Crew Chevrolet. Crew Chevrolet on Rivers. You've got a friend in the car business. Fan zone fan cam. What's going on down in the fan zone, Bob? Give us a little bit of uh, a little bit of insight on what the students are up to. Yeah, they just uh, did a bunch of push-ups there uh, to celebrate that uh, 35 to nothing score. I want to tell you, right before the game, I went out into uh, the crowd there, out in the tailgaters. And I let one family take a picture of the trophy with them. And the principal runs over a little while ago and says, hey, that picture you tweeted out, my daughter was in that picture. He was all excited about it. <laughs> Bob has a way of just finding everyone. <laughs> Here's Settle on the kickoff return. John Settle with running room out across the 30, 35. And finally popped down by Malik Ori. I haven't said Malik Ori's name a ton tonight, but we haven't had to. The secondary hadn't been involved all that much might have been a face mask or a horse collar on settle on the return and so porter gout could end up with pretty good field position to start this drive now if you're porter gout it looks like they might try to get some other players some looks now uh, now that we're getting a little bit later into the game with, with this score line. Dead ball personal foul on Hanahan. So Porter Gal will start this drive in Hanahan territory. We have a future Hanahan Hawk wandering his way into the press box here with us. <laughs> oh my goodness. Just learning to walk and all ready to, ready to play football. He's ready to hop on the headset next. <laughs> 102 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Hanahan in control here on week number five of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Later on tonight, we'll bring you the Cruz Chevrolet drive of the game. The Holy City heating and air, coolest play of the game. Still have to get back to the Delta Force All Stars cheer of the night. TEC Equipment Rental Player of the Game. In our Will Lou Gray Never Stop Learning Stop It Again. A lot of awards to give out. I remember our sponsors, we thank them every week. They're the ones that make this happen year in, year out on Friday Night Rivals. This is year number 13. And it's those businesses and sponsors in the community that make this production possible so that these student athletes, these cheerleaders, these coaches, these fans, uh, the bands can all be featured here week in, week out. We don't just do football. We have six basketball games slated for January and February as well. Looks like got Ian Ordonez on the tackle there. But like you're saying, sponsors make all this happen. We are forever grateful for them for letting us come out here and just have some fun on a Friday night. Sponsors make the television world go round. <laughs> Brown to settle. Lowers his head, picks up four or five, and Brad Bowles will have a decision to start the fourth quarter. It'll be fourth and about seven for Porter Gowd to open the fourth. Hanahan has been impressive. Unbeaten coming into tonight. They have five touchdowns, four on the ground this, after, uh, this evening. And they are in control through three quarters on Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Hand-to-hand -hand 35, Porter Gowd, nothing. Three quarters in the books here at Wiley Knight Stadium.
It has been a Hanahan kind of a night. The Hawks lead at 35-0. The band put on a show. The students have been out in full force. Pre-game show was fantastic from the Hawks. And it has all gone the way of the orange and blue. Porter Gout facing a fourth down here to open the fourth quarter. And Sean, what are you kind of looking for in the final 12 minutes of this football game if you're Porter, if you're Porter Gout and uh, if you're Hanahan? We'll talk about that after this play. Brown with Jackson behind him. Little toss sweep. They're going to let him throw it. Jackson, pressure coming, flings it deep. Knocked away and incomplete. Uh, Would not have counted had he completed it. Lyman downfield for Porter Gowd, and the ball will go over to Hanahan on downs. What are you looking for in the final 12 minutes? Well, for Hanahan, you want to see them just finish strong. I think that's big, the, been the biggest thing for Coach Blanchard, for Hanahan. He said he wants to see a perfect game is what he told uh, me before this game. He said he wants to see a full four quarters without letting their foot off the gas. And for Philip Simmons, you just want to finish strong. Uh, maybe try and get some defensive stops, possibly try and get some points up on the board. Uh, at, at this point, you're looking for things that you can go back to the film room on Monday and say, hey, we looked at this, we tried this in the fourth quarter, this worked, so now we can change our game plan for the next week to try and uh, keep this score deficit a little bit shorter, or smaller, I should say. Skiza versus South Carolina High School League uh, type of matchup here today, so private versus public. Not a uh, not a region game, so you're really trying to also get out of here injury-free the next 10, 11 minutes, get there some reps go. for the young guys, and both teams trying to find some positives. As we see, Jaden Cummings come out, and now Tyler Lassister is in. <laughs> not the ideal first play for Lassister. Yeah, Tyler Lassister bobbles the snap, has to fall on it to be second down. At about 13 yards. Good to see Lassister get some reps, though. I mean, this is the point of the game. This is the point of the game now where you start to see some of those people who may not get those first or second quarter reps uh, get in the game and make some make something happen. It's like, wish we had the, the stats on uh, what year he was, but <laughs> not fortunate enough to get those. Running room for a new back over that left side as pounding his way. Is that Drew Goldsmith? It's a new. It was Trey Shepard, it looks like. It was 14. Yep, Trey Shepard. He usually plays safety. Getting some reps in at a uh, running back. Experimenting all around for the Hawks this late. This is the time to do it. Shepard again on the carry will pick up four or five, but that's not going to be enough for a first down out to midfield. There's a Prince Shepard. There's a Trey Shepard. <laughs> a lot of Shepherds out here. Fourth down. Going to get some fresh bodies in there. Looks like Steve Blanchard wants to try and keep the football, and so he'll bring his... <laughs> First stringers back in after he got some fresh legs on the field. Dave Von Rivera. It's not hard to miss he's, this you guy. Know, you, know, you know he's still hungry. He's <laughs> signaling the sideline, feed me. In motion he goes, that same little toss sweep, and that's first down. It's like clockwork with this guy. First first down of the fourth quarter. David Ayler Law Office's first down. Your client-focused, community-driven injury firm. And so Hanahan moves the sticks. And they'll chew up a little bit more of this fourth quarter clock. You get the feeling both of these coaches not necessarily content with the final score, but they're content with kind of the, the games at hand. And Porter Gowd wants to stay healthy, get a lot of bodies on the field. Hanahan just wants to continue to keep some momentum and execute. The last thing you want to see is anyone go down with the injury this late in the game. Shepard, nice cutback right in the middle of the field and escapes. And sure, his last name isn't Houdini. Shepard <laughs> almost all the way on the ground, spun out of a tackle and popped free for another 15 yards. Wow. We had to send that one to ESPN Top Plays. And, uh, <laughs> had he taken that one to the house. Wow, yeah. If he, had taken, he would have had to break one more tackle to get there. As we look at the replay presented 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, Cruz Chevrolet on Rivers. You got a friend in the car business, Cruz Chevrolet replay. And he slips the tackle there, and the strong safety, he's usually standing in the secondary, and this time he's on offense making it to the secondary. Uh, great job by Shepard there. I said Cruz Chevrolet. Actually, David Ayler has the replay here in the fourth quarter. And Shepard just not going down easy. And you, you feel like John Settle, for instance, he's been a ball carrier tonight. He's probably got 50, 60, maybe 70 yards rushing on 15 or 16 carries. So he's got to be exhausted. Mm -hmm. And then you get someone with fresh legs coming in. And, and he, he can just go to work. Yeah. And it's funny, you can tell, you see the, uh, you see kind of the feet move faster, a little bit more uh, light in step, but I also just think Shepard is one quick dude, and uh, you saw it clearly on that play. Shepard again. Shepard with some running room in between the tackles, following his big center, Rip Bagwell. See if we can't hit some new faces on that offensive line. Another West Shore Homes first down. West Shore Homes, America's most admired home remodeling brand. Looks like we got a new left tackle in, Zach Connors. Zach Connors, CJ Vinoy, Kalani Roberts, Justin Maduro. Some second string offensive linemen in there. Over the left side, Shepard working. We're in the Boone Hall Fright Nights red zone again. Make your screams come true. Come true. We're going to take good care of our sponsors here in the fourth quarter. <laughs> oh. Hanahan scored on their first three possessions of the football game. They went to work in impressive fashion on the ground with Kayvon Rivera. Cooper Smith scored the first. Rivera had the next two. And a late passing touchdown in the first half. Was really the nail in the coffin in this one for the Hawks over Porter Gallup. Right now, just trying to put on the finishing touches. Shepard working to the edge. He's in. Touchdown, Hanahan. Trey Shepard, impressive running on that drive. And the Hawks are on their way to win number four. Wow. Something's in the water for these running backs at Hanahan. They all got the juice. Rivera, Cooper Smith, and now you're seeing a little bit of Trey Shepard as he shows his speed and gets to the outside. Great run by Shepard, and Hanhan's got to be feeling really good with themselves right now. Jackson knocks it through, and Hanahan in control. 6 for 6 by uh, Eric Johnson tonight on PATs. Trey Shepard, the man of the moment. The four-yard touchdown run. Hanahan in control over Porter Gow. The Hawks lead at 42 to nothing. And Shepard with the exclamation point. That's cool for Shepard to be able to get that TV on Friday Night Rivals. I was actually talking, I'll have to give a quick shout out. I was talking with uh, two of the guys who work in the parking lot here at Hanahan. Uh, that of Jay Meadows and Rhett Bagwell. And we've heard their names a little bit tonight. And uh, they got a great community over here at Hanahan. And they are one family and it's good to see everyone kind of get their moment to shine here on Friday Night Rivals. In the region with, with Philip Simmons, Buford, Woodland, Hanahan, it's it's a good football. It is a really good 3A football region. North Charleston, Battery Creek. Running room. Hyatt has it popped one, but getting close. Might have it here out across midfield. Finally shoved out of bounds. Front row seat for Trooper Bob down there to see that one. Bob, what do you think about that? make it all the way that was a pretty good uh hit to take him outside uh outside of the field but yeah he was uh he looked like he was shot out of a cannon when he came by me 
<laughs> You've been right there in the middle of a happy sideline all night. You, uh, you a little easier than a couple of weeks ago in the pouring rain and uh, sloshing it's, mud. It's beautiful now. As a matter of fact, if you see people leaving, they just announced that hot dogs are a dollar at the concession stand. So I don't think they're leaving the game. They're just getting a deal. All right, Zeke, I'm gonna have to go get that. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take two. That Chick Fil A sandwich from uh, about four thirty is starting to wear off. <laughs> hey guys, you guys uh, next week. Since you're going up to Somerville, I'll throw a steak on the grill for you because I'm only eight minutes from the stadium. There we go, Bob. <laughs> That'll taste pretty good after my one-hour commute. <laughs> Porter Gal going Ooh. to work. Big Ooh. hit, big pop in the middle of the line. Oh, who else? Oh, <laughs> you don't even you don't even have to look. Caden Gaddis loves to hit, and he does it so form perfectly. That face mask is up, and he has laid the wood three or four times tonight. Wow impact player to say the least and you're right this dude he loves to hit and it doesn't matter if it's 42 nothing with five minutes left to go in the game he's coming at you a hundred percent Porter Gout second down 10 after the big hit by Gaddis some fresh legs in there for the Cyclones. I think that was hardly Bickerstaff. We've seen a little bit tonight. Ball popped out. But popped out very late, and that'll bring up third down. Another group we don't talk about. This is a very dynamic production. This, our, our producers and our staff, they have to go to a different site every week. They have to uh, set up in a new stadium that's not really fit for TV. We send a signal to Houston. It comes back. It goes out on air. And, and my TV, Charleston. There's a lot of working parts. Bob's mic wirelessly in a facility that's not meant for it. It's a lot, a lot of working parts to make this work every week. And our production staff does a great job of making it happen. Love to give shout out to them. Some people not even in the state trying to help us out. And uh, we are appreciative of everyone here. Pitch a little high. And the ball free on the ground. And the Hawks say they have it, and they do, and that's the third. If Caden Gaddis, who came out of there with it, isn't the week, player of the week, defensive player of the week in the area, he's not going to have the stats. <laughs> he's going to have the fumble recovery. He's not going to have the pick and such. Three fumble recoveries for Gaddis. Yeah, but if he's not the player of the week in the area, I don't know who is. Hanahan in complete control. 42 nothing. they lead Porter Gowd. Friday night rivals driven by Cruz Chevrolet. Set to put the wrap on week number five of Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet, Zeke Beam, Sean Mahoney, Trooper Bob on the sidelines, Hanahan impressive tonight on their way to 4-0. and oh. It's a team that hadn't played a lot of football, didn't get to play in week zero due to storms. Week zero weather was brutal. Brutal. And popping free for a moment is Shepard, but lost a couple of yards. And so Hanahan really just now falling into that season rhythm. They had a bye two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. 
So just not really kind of getting their rhythm for the season. I mean, this is a great way to get your rhythm <laughs> based on how they're playing tonight. Uh, they look to be in full swing if they can keep this up. Hawks trying to put the finishing touches on it. Five yard run for Shepard. Now let's take a look at our drive of the game. Crew Chevrolet drive of the game. And this one just kind of had to be from the word go. Yeah. Hawks came right out. Nice throw and catch. What a catch there. Ashton Drayton setting it up inside the Boone Hall Fright Nights red zone. Cooper Smith scored the first touchdown of the night. And that's our drive of the game. Crew Chevrolet drive of the game. You've got a friend in the car business, Crew Chevrolet on Rivers. Just the match that started the hot fire that was this hand to hand Hawks offense. Drayton with the great catch, and they have not looked back. Third down, Shepard. First down, Shepard. Another West Shore Homes first down for the hand to hand Hawks. And he's somebody that might have to see. Might have to see a little more action moving forward. Now time for our coolest play of the game. And what else would it be? It was kind of the one that put this one to an end just before <laughs> halftime. Jaden Cummings, nice job. Buying time in the pocket. Got all the way to the line of scrimmage. Threw it at the last moment. And found Drew Goldsmith for six. Yeah, that was kind of the dagger for the first half. And great awareness to get that ball off before it probably collapses by Cummings. Coolest play of the game presented by Holy City Heating and Air. Holy City Heating and Air, cool play of the game. We provide solutions for every season. Popping free with Shepard. I believe there's a flag behind the play, and this one's going to come back a little bit. Could be procedure. Yeah. It is. Hand to hand wasn't lined up properly. Final two minutes. And now one last superlative to hand out before we get to player of the game. We'll go to our stop of the game. Will Lou Gray stop of the game. And who do you think this features? Um, I'm going to take a guess and say he's number 24, and his initials are K and G. <laughs> Caden Gaddis has been not really everywhere, but he has been a rock. <laughs> Talking about rock in the middle of the defense, Caden Gaddis. Look at Part of the Will Lou Gray stop of the game. Will Lou Gray never stop learning. <laughs> Gaddis? Caden Gaddis hadn't, hadn't stopped learning how to stop. He's not going to stop till those clocks hit zero. <laughs> didn't learn how to stop ball carriers in the middle yet. Boy. I haven't seen an impact player like him in a while, too. Three fumble recoveries. Three fumble recoveries by Gaddis. He's a monster on Davis. We said his name so much tonight, and uh, good to see him get some recognition on that hit. And that hit was with five minutes left in the fourth quarter. By yeah, the way. If, there's not, if he's not if he's not the Low Country Defensive Player of the Week, then uh, I'm going to ask for a recount. Second down and long could be our final play of the night. Shepard, you know <laughs> he got a touchdown. You know he wanted to break he's one. Hungry. Porter Gowd hung tough, but just a little too much firepower for Hannah Hand tonight. Steve Blanchard and company, they improved to 4-0, and and they were impressive. His team, he said, they just worked so hard. Top to bottom, they worked so hard. And that hard work paid off tonight as they come away with a 42-0 win on Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet over the Porter Gowd Cyclones. Great statement win by Hannah Hand tonight, and... Porter Gout, back to the drawing board, but still a lot of positives to take out of this game. Yeah, trying to get healthy without a quarterback, yeah. still learn new quarterback, learning the offense. There's there are brighter, brighter days, and Brad Bowles' team was playing up tonight, playing a really good 3A team. They're going to be just fine in reach and play as their season moves forward. Impressive night for Hanahan. Impressive night beginning to end before we ever kicked off. 
here at Hanahan High School. It was a lot of fun tonight. Player tonight, player of the game tonight, no surprise here whatsoever. Kayvon Rivera up and down the field all night long. Two touchdowns on the ground for Rivera tonight. He is our player of the game, sponsored by TEC Equipment Rental. This season, end zone scissor lift is provided by TEC Equipment. We rent the good stuff. Week number five in the books, and it was a good week. Number five, four. Number five, <laughs> Kayvon, Kayvon Rivera, the player of the game. A little short toss. Student body right. Rivera in for body one of right. his two touchdowns tonight. And Hanahan, the Hawks, cruise to 4-0. They top Porter Gowd 42 to nothing here at Hanahan High School. Hanahan improves to 4-0 tonight. Bob down on the sidelines. Bob, anybody happy down there? Oh, yeah, we got every, the whole team's happy. We've got the player of the game right here. The coach, what makes him such a great runner? My man gets in the weight room. He's been in the weight room for four years, and he busts his tail every day. That's why, he's, that's why he does what he does. Your team scored 42 points. Your defense held them from scoring. How proud are you from your team? So proud of these guys, man. They've been through a lot. Super proud of them. Super proud. All right, we got a trophy Friday night rivals trophy. Coach, congratulations. Happy group of Hanahan Hawks down on the sidelines. John Mahoney had to leave us already. He's got to go do Friday Night Rivals in the studio. A little bit of everything going on here tonight. And Hanahan had a little bit of everything going on tonight. Special thanks to All-American Awards for the trophy tonight. Helping Charleston recognize excellence since 1993. Hanahan a winner here tonight. 42 to nothing. Join Sean Mahoney and Natalie Spala on Friday Night Rivals tonight at 11.05. They'll have scores and highlights from throughout the low country. Somerville at, uh, and Stratford at Somerville next week for week number six of Friday Night Rivals. For Sean Mahoney and Trooper Bob, I'm Zeke Beam. So long from Hanahan. The Hawks a winner 42-0. We'll see you next week on Friday Night Rivals, driven by Cruz Chevrolet.